We're here at the Milken Institute 2013 Global Conference sitting down with Neil Ferguson. He is Lawrence A. Tisch Professor of History at Harvard. He has an upcoming book, uh, The Great Degeneration. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. So let's revisit this austerity stimulus debate because some are saying that Krugman, Paul Krugman, has won in light of the fact that there have been some major holes poked in the preeminent research from Reinhardt and Rogoff, which supposedly showed that high government debt levels uh, hurt growth. Has Krugman won? Well, no, because actually the holes that you're referring to in uh, Ken Rogoff and Carmen Reinhardt's work are very small, and there's one of them. Uh, and the a a a overall argument that there's a relationship between high debt and low growth still stands. In fact, their critics admit that, and there's almost no difference in the big results. So I, I think, unfortunately, that the financial media have rather blown this out of all proportion it's and have all misrepresented our fault, it. Professor. Well, it, it is all our fault, Professor. You know what? This is technical stuff. It and, is technical and unfortunately, stuff. technical stuff involving uh, Excel spreadsheets and regression analysis does not translate well into headlines. And the headlines here have really d done a disservice uh, to Ken Rogoff and Carmen Reinhardt. I, I totally agree. I, I hear have to you. say, I also think that Paul Krugman's attempt to claim that he somehow won a victory is typical of the the way in which he behaves, which is much what, more what like a well, much more like a tabloid journalist than like a serious economist, which I guess he used to be. So you don't think this lends any credence to uh, someone like Krugman, who is arguing for stimulus, saying deficits don't matter in the short term? Well. No, because if you look at the research, not only by Rogoff and Reinhardt, but by their critics, the result's the same. It's extremely implausible, and I think this is generally recognized, that governments with already high debt can improve their situation by making their debt even larger. What that does is to create a very large vulnerability. And we know from historic experience how high debt scenarios end. They either end with inflation or they end with default. What they don't end with is a rapid increase in the growth rate. And I don't think there's any real controversy over that issue. A minor error in the Reinhardt Rogoff paper, one paper, does not refute the case that governments with excessively large public debts have to bring them under control. And that is why nearly all governments in that situation in the world today are reducing uh, their borrowing. It's, it's happening because it has to happen. Why does it has, have to happen somewhere like the U.S., which is the reserve currency issuer, where the Fed has had very much success keeping borrowing rates low? Why the U.S., and, and what is the scary level of, of public debt here? Well, the, the first point to know is that we, we don't have any real idea of what the upper bound is, right. but we do know that you can't borrow a trillion dollars a year for the rest of time, which is essentially what American fiscal policy was until recently. How do we know that? Well, if you look at the historical record, once a government gets to a very, very high level of debt, first of all, there's a risk. Uh, and the risk is that very small increases in borrowing costs create a vast ocean of red ink. Mm -hmm. So that risk is not negligible. Uh, and secondly, the historical record is very clear. Very large debts do not simply disappear by magic. Mm -hmm. If you can't grow your way from underneath them, and that's hardly ever happened, you either end up with a default on all or part of the debt, or you end up with high inflation. I mean, the record historically on that is very, very clear. Mm -hmm. That no responsible policymaker wants to set out down the road with those scenarios as likely destinations. Right. So I, I think one of the issues with the Reinhardt Rogoff, the, the research from the UMass researchers, is that it eliminated this idea that there's a magical number of, of debt to GDP where growth dramatically falls off. It was the average that the UMass research called into question, not the median trend, which, which remained. So what would you say is this a, a kind of turning point in a government debt load that's a real problem. Is there one, or is it case by case? Well, well, it would be very wrong of me as a historian to suggest that there is a magic threshold that applies to all countries. Okay. Remember, debt to GDP is not a good measure of fiscal sustainability. You might be just as well looking at interest payments as a percentage of revenue. That's something I've been arguing for mm -hmm. years. Secondly, governments probably should publish balance sheets rather than just the simple accounts that they currently serve up. If governments uh, looked more like companies in the way that they account for the finances, we'd get a very different picture, but they don't. Uh, in fact, if companies behaved like governments, they would be essentially Enron. We have a problem 
problem in the way that we account for public debt. They'd be like Enron. Right. So this is essentially, look at the United States government today. Lots of off-balance sheet vehicles that aren't included. We don't include the unfunded liabilities of Medicare and Social Security when we talk about the federal debt. If we did, it would be right, ten be times higher. larger. So th there's a fundamental problem with government accounting. When you say to me, what's the math magic threshold in the debt to GDP ratio? My reply is, that number itself is not very valuable. What is clear is that large debt is risky. That's very clear. Do we know how large is risky for the United States? No, but it's probably not as high as Japan's. Why? Because Japan has financed its own borrowing for decades. It doesn't borrow from anybody else, whereas the US for years borrowed from abroad. Right. Increasingly, the federal debt's financed by the Federal Reserve. Right. Now, that has to be risky, mm -hmm. essentially to monetize an ever larger share of the government debt. Thank you so much, Professor Ferguson.